Kenny Cunningham, good morning to you. Morning, lads. How's it going? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We should talk about centre backs and, and Ireland because we, we suddenly, from going where it looked like. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> It looked like we were... <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Except for uh, like the rest of the campaign to now having none. Um, so suddenly John Egan, his form is absolutely vital for us. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what was vital as well, I'd suggest, is the fact that we were, at least we were able to get John and uh, um, Kevin Lynch a, a game time under our belt in their previous uh, international. A lot of people off the point in these kind of friendly games, etc., etc. A bit of a dull affair, generally speaking, typically first half against Bulgaria, but Looking back, back now, it's probably a bit of a godsend in terms of at least we were able to get those two players some uh, competitive game time together because it looks as if uh, both of them are going to get a start uh, uh, in a couple of weeks' time in our crucial qualifying uh, games to come up. So, yeah, I mean, good luck to them. Uh, that's all I'd say. You never know in football. I'm sure Mick was planning with his back forward intact, albeit, and there would have been suspended and all the chat, all the noise would have been about who was going to come in at left back. You know, would have been Matt Docker, is he going to be fair? Um, would Mick look a little bit forward to field? Greg Cunningham, uh, etc. cetera. One or two orders, Derek Williams potentially, but all of a sudden now all the talks about that central defensive position. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not it's not as there's not enough has been said about Georgia in terms of this as well. I think Kenny because Georgia um, have not done much at all offensively in this tournament so far. In Dublin, they created very little. They they haven't scored against any of the big three teams. So I think Long and Egan will be more than competent enough, assuming they have enough time together on the training ground to to deal with what Georgia throw at them. My issue would be how we play kind of further up the pitch. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I'd have confidence in the in the players. You're right, Johnny, in terms of how Georgia play. Very possession-based game. Well, we've seen that, not just when we've played them previously, but over the last kind of two, four, uh, six years when we've played them. You know, they do cover the ball, and they're very good in terms of their ball uh, retention. But you're right, in terms of having a real kind of cutting edge high up the pitch, haven't got those type of forwards across the top end of the pitch who would really kind of frighten you to death. I mean, you have to give them uh, respect. Your concentration levels have to be good. You know, you switch off for a moment, and certainly their their forwards are good enough to uh, to hurt you. But generally speaking, yeah, they haven't got that high quality kind of high up the pitch to kind of complement the kind of good possession game uh, which they uh, possess. So yeah, I, I would expect us to be comfortable in our shape for the majority of the game. But you're right. You know, where where do we want to be sitting there deep and a half for most of the game? I don't think Mick will accept that either. And it, it has been ever done to make. Kind of, he has been doing some work with Teddy Connor on, on the training pitch in terms of getting us a bit higher up the pitch and, and pressing a little bit higher, a little bit earlier, and squeezing a little bit closer uh, to the halfway line. So I'm sure Mick will, I'm sure the approach to the players will, will be the same. Just because you end up in the edge of the box doesn't necessarily mean the time that's where you want to be. You get pushed back there at times because of the quality of the football uh, if the opposition team. So yeah, I can't, I can't wait to look forward to the uh, games and a great opportunity for the two lads. Um, at centre half, and I'm presuming potentially Matt Dockley coming in at left back. Not you two lads think, but good to see him back at the weekend. He looks fit, looks mm. strong, got a great goal, and uh, I think he deserves his chance. Uh, and Matt, even albeit uh, at left back. Yeah, absolutely. Coleman played quite well as well. I thought against against City, like uh, attackfully, he did a lot of good stuff. Yes, yeah, so that's a good combination there in there in form. And um, I, I do want to talk with some of the other stuff about the Premier League, particularly the start with the, the Spurs game. Um, a, a, a win coming through the situation that they came through uh, in that game at the weekend is that the type of thing that kickstarts a season for a group like Spurs who have high expectations and who started slowly? Yeah, it can do, Gerald. Although that, that we probably probably had that chat maybe a couple of weeks ago when they beat Fal- uh, Palace four 0 at home. That was a really kind of high energy, kind of vibrant type of performance. And the talk after the game was when now the season started. Now here we go. Uh, watch out, but that wasn't quite the case. Um, dipped off that, dipped off after that. Uh, conceded two goals away to uh, Olymp- Olympiacos soon after that, and just kind of dipped again a little bit. And they caught a lot of chattering leading up to the game of the weekend, yeah, as you would have known in terms of Pochettino coming out publicly and just maybe question again the kind of focus, maybe the attitude of one or two of the, uh, the players and the players. You know, a uh, few soundbites coming out there, a little bit disgruntled in terms of the manager being a little bit too vocal as well himself. So we just need just need to quiet everything down, turn the noise down, and just concentrate on what they're good at. And it was a funny old game. I don't know if you saw Saturday start to finish, but it was a peculiar game. Didn't start well. Tottenham very slow, but kind of found a little bit of rhythm, got the goal. And just when you felt as if, well, here we go, they're going to open up and play the, 
type of football where we know they can have the man sent off earlier to desperate yellow cards like um, and then it was a bit of a struggle for them after that but showed a bit of resilience and character I suppose the manager would point to that that was true they kind of dug in there but it wasn't kind of pretty and just kind of got um, kind of just got over the, the finishing line so yeah that's uh, that's encouraging in terms of man of the performance but uh, yeah just yeah, one or two small little areas we're concerned about the sports team uh, at the moment particularly centre midfield I don't think the balance is there got some good football and players players who like to uh, look high up the pitch and probably at their best when they're in possession and going forward. Not so, um, not so effective when they haven't got the ball. When you got to get around and make tackles and uh, get close to people and track runners. I'm talking about the likes of Winks and and on Belly in particular. Here's Suzuko. Players haven't haven't got those attributes to me. So the quicker to get the likes of Dora and Wanyama not only back fit but actually in the kind of form they were some time ago, uh, the better for Spurs. But I think they'll be okay going forward. Too many good players there. Um, Michael Obafemi came off the bench very they replaced Danny Ings with about 10 minutes left to go was he any good? yeah that's what I tell you what, he looks like a strong boy he came off the bench was a close above him strong lad a very dynamic quick didn't have a didn't have a huge amount should have got a freaky gate to the box uh, silly fell from Danny Rose didn't get it but not a huge amount of time really there uh, uh, to insert himself but it's great that we're talking about these kind of young Irish players coming through Obafemi um I did uh, Troy Para, Aaron Connolly, though Aaron Predominantly plays off the off the left hand side. Got some real options now, um, uh, under age level. And the big question as always is, can these lads get um, competitive game time at their at their respective football clubs just to make that next step forward and really start banging on the door of the, the senior international team? Yeah, Connolly got a good half hour at the weekend as well. So yeah, he he was he was uh, Dan did an interview, an interview with him. He he came across uh, quite well in in terms of also talking about how important um, the coaching at under twenty one level is in terms of kind of managing him. But Kenny, these guys like. Those players you mentioned, I would definitely argue Obafemi Connolly should be on the cusp of the squad now. I, I think at least one of them will be in the squad in Tbilisi. Um, on the cusp of the squad, I think they're banging on the door. Yeah, I'm not sure about a guarantee. When you when you look at who maybe Aaron will be up against, you're probably talking about probably at his best at the moment. You'd probably uh, say he's left at a three, high up the pitch. So who's ahead of him? You'd probably have to say James McLean, uh, Robbie Brady. Uh, Ronan Corris, uh, Callum Robinson. So, is he going to put one of those players out of the squad? Possibly not. I just feel as if, such as a kind of uh, pressurised environment around these two games, Mick might just lean towards his uh, tried and tested, certainly for over the next uh, couple of the months. But certainly, if Aaron stays around the, the Brighton squad and he gets a bit more game time over the next couple of months, Christmas period into the into the new year, well, then uh, hopefully he can he can. Uh, he would be pushing strongly uh, for a place in the squad come the new year. But I don't think there's such a rush, uh, John. It's not a big clamour. And we all get excited about young players, the individual qualities which they have. We want to see them kind of promoted. But, you know, not no bad, no bad thing. Maybe just to, just to ease off a little bit. Maybe just, just be a little bit more patient with them. I thought, I thought it was the right decision to leave Troy, uh, Troy Parler with his uh, 21s against Sweden the other month in terms of his development where he needed to be. And probably the same with Aaron Connolly. I think it's only a matter of time before these lads make this step up. It's got to be at the, at the right time, kind of mentally, psychologically in the right place, they're ready to be able to, to, to deal with it. So I wouldn't be in a huge rush. Uh, I wouldn't be advocating maybe Aaron, he's a must for the squad uh, next month. But I'm as excited as anybody else in terms of it, some of the individual quality which I'm seeing at the underage level. I, I'm, 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 I'm totally in kind of disagreement with the way um, Mick is probably thinking on this in terms of he is quite conservative as a coach um, and he knows that there are like three significant games left in this group that um, obviously are going to be very important but like Ronan Curtis is never going to be coming off the bench uh, to my mind for a Premier League team you know Aaron Connolly he's so quick if the game is stretched into Tbilisi especially if we're 1-0 up or something like that, where this is really ideal, where you're under the cosh a bit, but they're pressing because they're looking for a goal. To have the pace of Connolly, he's so quick. And what he's done already for Brighton, his performance against Newcastle was excellent. He'll be a little bit older. When they bring out the, the two squads now for the 21s game, which is obviously sold out, it's going to be very interesting. I don't think Parrott will get in because he probably didn't do enough against Colchester and mixed eyes. I'd have to put Connolly in there and I'd have to want him on the bench if, if with 20 minutes left as an option, definitely. Yeah, uh, well, you're talking about pace there. So he's got Callum O'Dell there as well. Nobody's quicker than him, uh, Johnny, over mm. 20, uh, 30, 50 yards. And, and pace is right. I take your point in terms of maybe being penned back and looking for a little bit of an out ball. But it's not just about pace. 
It's about a bit of game intelligence as well. And, you know, the go- last 20 minutes of the game, every decision's got to be right in terms of when you keep possession of the ball, when you take an extra so when you pass, or when you actually do go to uh, uh, triple with the ball. You don't want to be dribbling in the wrong areas, 10 yards outside. Uh, your penalty, penalty box which young, uh, young players do they're so keen to impress when they when they get on the pitch yeah. so it's a bit of game understanding as well so that's what I'm saying that's where that little, the more experienced come in your more experienced players uh, can uh, generally make those uh, decisions better but I certainly wouldn't be rally against it in terms of what you said is very dynamic uh, player Aaron and some young players kind of um, uh, surprise you they're not, they're not overall at all uh, but it's just kind of pressurised pressure cooker atmosphere in fact some of them actually revel in it some don't some find it very difficult it takes some time to adjust uh, to senior international football I'm not sure not sure exactly where Aaron is on that spectrum but it's great uh, the good thing is Johnny we're actually having this conversation Absolutely, not just about yeah. Aaron, but about one or two other players and actually forward attack minded players as well which wasn't the case for some time. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement there about four or five of those players. Which yeah, is it's great. great. I can't wait to see them all. Uh, hopefully, making it at the same time. Um, Kenny, we're nearly out of time, but uh, I do want to just briefly ask you about Liverpool. The start of the season has been impeccable. It's games like the one at the weekend where they scratch a one 0 win against a side who wants to be dogged against them. That you know, if you're going to win a tight, you're going to have to win those games. But the, the run they're on at the moment is absolutely remarkable. Can they keep it up? Do you think? Yeah, I think they can keep it up in terms of in terms of stay top of the table and go on to win the title there. That, that, that's what you're saying long term. Yeah, I think they can. I think they will. Like I said, I, I, I fancied the start of the season. I thought this would be the year. I don't think it's been perfect in terms of the performances. You're right in terms of the points. Totally, absolutely, it's been perfect. But I think you could, uh, you know, you could look at a couple of the performances. Probably at the weekend, not their very best, and maybe one or two games uh, prior to that. But you're right to get the getting the job done they have that kind of dogness about them, that kind of re- uh, uh, resilience that they, they haven't had previously it was always a small uh, flaw in the team but that's been uh, that's, not, that's not the case at the moment you know they're the type of team they're physically imposed and they have a real kind of physical presence and speak long st- characters all around the pitch and you just feel as if they're kind of when they're not at their best now they're more than capable of managing the game and getting through which they did at the weekend despite you know individuals maybe not quite being at their the very best and that's the good thing from a Liverpool perspective I'm sure Liverpool sports are thinking you know what we can actually play a bit better than this mm. front three haven't exactly been foreign maybe uh, the first kind of month six uh, weeks of the season defensively there's been a couple of small little individual mistakes and issues there so for me there's actually grounds for improvement Liverpool were playing at a higher level last year than they have been for the first six weeks of the season All right. so that's the good thing going forward I agree with you they're in great shape Kenny good stuff thanks for joining us this morning cheers lads